Hey everyone, welcome back to Everything is Relative, where today I'm going to be explaining why the gravitational potential energy is always negative. Now, for those of you that are doing A-level physics, in your first year you may have heard that the gravitational potential energy is a, always a positive value, but then you get to the topic of gravitational fields and you learn something quite strange. You learn that the gravitational potential energy between two massive objects in the universe is always negative. And conceptually, that might be difficult to understand. Now, just a heads up, there is a little bit of calculus use in this video, which again is not part of the A-level syllabus, but I think it will help you understand conceptually why we get a negative gravitational potential energy between two masses. So in this case, I'm going to assume maybe the Sun and the Earth as my two massive objects. The Sun has a mass uppercase M and the Earth with a smaller mass has a mass lowercase m. They are joined, their centers are joined by a distance along a line by a distance of r. And recall that at infinity, we set the gravitational potential energy to be zero. Meaning if I take two objects far enough away, then they feel a gravitational force that is so weak that we can assume it to be zero. And so by, by simple, uh, our simple, um, notation we can we can see that immediately our gravitational potential energy must increase with distance and if something increases towards zero it must be negative that's an easy way to understand the concept and in this video i'll explain why another reason why this must always be zero so the first thing we need to do is define what gpe is what is gravitational potential energy i'm going to use gpe as the acronym because i'm too lazy to write gravitational potential energy out each time now, what did you learn in first year? Well, you learned that if you're doing A-level physics, if the distance r is small, so for a, an object being thrown off the surface of the Earth, for example, where its height above the Earth's surface is much less than the Earth's radius, at the gravitational potential energy, I'm going to use Ep, is approximately mgh, where g is a constant. 9.81 meters per square second to be precise, or newton per kg. So if I assume this is the surface of the Earth, I throw a ball up, and the ball has a mass m. If it goes to a height h above the surface of the Earth, then with a constant g, the acceleration of free fall or the, the gravitational field strength at the Earth's surface being approximately constant, 9.8 meters per square second, then the gravitational potential energy of this ball is mgh. But again, I've made another video to describe why this only works close to the Earth's surface. But for two objects that are separated by a great distance, like the Sun and the Earth, we can't use this equation. And so it turns out that gravitational potential energy is actually negative. And so we have to find the equation and show that there's a minus sign in front of that equation as well. But first, if you go to the topic of gravitational potential energy, what you see that is by definition, what is the gravitational potential energy? What is the, it is the work done, specifically the work done, which is equivalent to an energy, to bring the Earth, to bring mass little m from infinity from infinitely far away, from a point where it doesn't feel the sun's gravitational field, to the distance that it currently is, which I've labeled as r. So I've taken the definition and adapted it to my example. So it's big, so that it's now a distance r from m. And when I say r, I mean the centers are separated by a distance r. We assume these two to be point masses for simplicity. Now, what happens between these two masses? Well, the sun attracts the earth. Big M attracts little m. Again, this doesn't have to be the sun and the earth. Any two masses will have the same effect. But m, big M attracts little m, and so little m is, has a force on it pointing towards big M. So by this definition, I must do negative work to take the earth from infinity to a distance r. Now, what does that mean? How can I do negative work? 
So I have to do negative work to move mass little m closer. Now, let's imagine for a moment that gravity was repulsive. And in this case, the Earth is being pushed away from the Sun. To fit this definition, to bring the Earth from infinity to this point R, I have to do work against this repulsive force. And so I must push the Earth from infinity to R. Hence, I must do positive work. I must give some of my energy to the Earth to get it from infinity to R because I have to overcome the repulsion of the Sun. But we know that gravity is an attractive force. So this is why I need to do negative work. The Earth is actually pulling me from infinity to R. So I would have to pull in the opposite way if I wanted to overcome the attractive force for me to be the one doing the work. So the work is basically done on me. And that's what negative work means. So how does this look mathematically? I have to do negative work to bring little m or the earth closer to the sun. So let's go to Newton's law of universal gravitation, which you would have done as part of the first things you learned in this topic. So the force that big M applies on little m, I'm going to say F big M on little m, we know from Newton's law is minus g big M little m over r squared. Now, why do I have a minus sign? g here, as you all know, is the universal gravitational constant. I'm just going to write it as constant. Why is there a minus sign? Because the force here that big M applies on little m is from right to left. And so I'm going to take the convention to be anything to the right being positive, anything to the left being negative. So since this force points from right to left, this force is going to be negative just by convention. So this force is to the left, and that's the force that big M exerts on little m. So the thing feeling the force is the earth, little m. Um, and so we can imagine it to be F big M on little m pointing to the left. And then for me to do work on the mass, I'm doing negative work. For me to do negative work, I must apply in a force in the opposite direction. So the force that I, me, applies on little m must be in the opposite direction. So mathematically, I must have the same magnitude so that I can do the work onto the planet Earth to push it closer to the sun. And so the force that I apply on the Earth will be positive gm m over r squared. Similarly, if I was doing positive work against a repulsive force, I need to have the same magnitude of force to able to push the, the small mass closer to the big mass from infinity to the point r. Now, if I wanted to find the work done, then I know work is force times distance. But there's a bit of a problem here. The force itself is changing with distance. As I get closer to the sun, then the Earth is going to have a greater force on it. It's going to accelerate with a greater, it's going to have a greater acceleration because it's closer to the sun. So force is changing with distance. And so I'm going to have to introduce some calculus. So look away now if you aren't happy with calculus, but it is only basic calculus. I have to integrate the force with respect to the position, F dr. That's going to give me the work that I'm doing. And I'm integrating from infinity to the point r. So how can I write this? Well, I can bring out the constants. This is the force that I'm applying, that I'm applying to the Earth to bring it from infinity to r. So I bring out the constants g, m, m, multiply that by the integral from infinity to r of 1 over r squared dr. And this is, again, an integral because f is changing with r. So every time I move the earth a little closer, the force changes. Hence, I require calculus. For every infinitesimal change in position, there is a change in the force. And so my mathematics skills should take over, and I should have that this is gmm into minus 1 over r, and we evaluate this from infinity to r. Being 
poor mathematicians and being physicists, we can simply say that 1 over infinity is 0. And this simplifies to minus g big M little m over r. Ah, and if you look at your textbook, you see that this is the equation for gravitational potential energy, EP. And so the work that is done in bringing the Earth from infinity to the point R is a negative value. G is always positive, M is always positive. Actually, both masses, M and little m, are positive. And R must also always be a positive position. It starts at zero and goes out to some positive value. So if everything in this fraction is positive, the minus sign ensures that EP is always negative. And it turns out that for all attractive forces, again, this is purely by convention, but for attractive forces, the potential energy stored between the objects feeling those forces must always be negative. And so that's an explanation as to why gravitational potential energy is always negative. I hope this clears up some of the conceptual difficulties. Again, it, there are easier ways and other ways to explain it, but I think this is more concrete and the mathematics, if you understand it, will hopefully help make this a little clearer. So please be sure to like this video, to comment, to subscribe to the channel. It'll help me out a lot, but I'm looking forward to seeing you next time when everything is relative. For now, that's all from me, Mr. K. See you soon.